The war in Israel is about good and evil. It has the entire Middle East and quite frankly, the world on high alert. Hamas is of the devil. There is no other way to put it. Their number one objective is to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what we witnessed so far. Christian or not, what they've done should be shunned by each and every person on earth. But clearly, that's not the case. So before I get into the details of this tragedy, I'd like to spend a few minutes praying for the citizens of Israel and for the families who have lost a loved one due to the terrible cowards who call themselves Hamas. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. First and foremost, thanking you for your unconditional love, your strong and sturdy foundation. Father, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I repent of all of my sins, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and the sins of the entire world. Father God, I pray for the strongholds that are of this world. I pray, Lord, for your deliverance to every person on this earth, for those specifically who do not know you. I pray, Lord, that they will come into contact with you and have a change of heart and truly accept you in their heart as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with the principalities of this dark world. And I know that Hamas is directly from the devil. This is a spiritual warfare. And this is a spiritual attack on humanity. Yes, we live in a fallen world, but I know, Lord, that when it's all said and done, every knee will bow and every tongue will, will confess that you are Lord and you are Christ. Father God, I pray for a supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding for the family members who have lost someone to this horrendous tragedy, to friends and family and loved ones that are currently held hostage I pray that you would give them a supernatural strength, Lord. And if they do not know you as their Lord and Savior, at this moment, wherever they are, that they will accept you, Lord, because this world is passing over. And the only thing that will stand is a new heaven and new earth, the heaven that you have created for everyone that choose and accept you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, Lord, I pray for the ones who do not know you. I pray for the families who have lost loved ones to this senseless tragedy, Father God. Thank you for your, your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your accountability, holding us accountable, Lord Jesus. The good news is the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Many are calling the attacks on Israel as end time prophecies, and I wouldn't disagree. No matter what comes of this battle, God is still on the throne and his word will forever remain true. It's important that you and I keep our focus on the one and only almighty God who can save us from the filth of this world. Hamas, President Biden, nor any other world leader has the answers or the power to prevent the pure evils of this world. Jesus Christ was the answer, is the answer, and will forever be the only answer to your heartache and pain. I'm not going to pretend like I have the answers and that this war will usher in the Antichrist, but I do know that we're living in the last days. As I sit here and think about this war, I'm watching a CNN interview hosted by Jake Tapper. Jake is interviewing this lady by the name of Natalia Ben D, whose son was unfortunately taken by Hamas. She states that she can't understand how this evil can occur and asks the question, what is it? Is it a satanic evil? What is it? My answer to her is yes, of course, it's a satanic evil. There's no way around the satanic and spiritual attacks that are taking place. And believe it or not, these satanic attacks will continue to happen until the Lord has finally established a new heaven and earth. That's why it's imperative that you and I keep our trust in him. Jeremiah 2.13 states, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, 
the fountain of living waters and hewed out cisterns for themselves and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. We are a fallen people who have tried doing life on our own and without the one who created the heavens and the earth. This is why we've continued to witness the evil one roam the earth seeking for someone to devour. We have resurrected idols and created false gods who are not worthy of our praise. Yet so many people have bowed down to the false security of this dark age. Jeremiah reminds us that without God, humankind gropes around in the dark, looking for answers, but not finding any. In critical moments like this, we often hear politicians calling for peace, making statements that may sound good but lack real substance. Words alone are hollow when they have nothing to back them up and don't look to God. They're like broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Only Jesus has the spring of living water. Only he has the answer to the Israeli-Palestinian crisis because only Jesus is capable of transforming hearts lives, and ultimately nations. These monsters are willing to die for the cause. They consider it a holy war and use humans as shields to fight against their enemies. If using innocent civilians as shields is not evil and satanic, every Hamas terrorist who is killed by Israel becomes a martyr for the cause, inspiring the next generation to fight back against what they perceive to be the evil occupier. In every attack by Israel on Hamas and Gaza, no matter what precautions are taken to avoid civilian casualties, is perceived as an attack on the populace as a whole. It almost feels like a lose-lose situation. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, it's a win-win. No matter what goes on on this side of heaven, rest assured, that if you accept Jesus Christ in your heart and see him as your personal savior, that all your troubles and your pain and your heartache for eternity will be gone. So for all of you who are witnessing these horrific acts by Hamas in Israel, and you do not know the Lord as your personal savior, I encourage you in this moment to set down your pride and your ego and all the false idols and the false gods that you're praising to accept the one and only true God, Jesus Christ, into your heart. Again, we don't know what the future holds for the country of Israel, but I know what the future holds if you put your heart and your trust in the Lord Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Again, We'll continue to pray for the people in Israel. Thank you for your support on my channel. Always strive to remain set apart. Take care.